Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So, in today's video, we are looking for zeolites. Now, this is at, we're at a location back here along Wawa Wee Road, which we've been to before. There's a listing up on the website for it. Um, there's other things that you can find out here. Opal, calcite, agates, those things. But specifically today, I want to find some zeolites. Now, zeolites are its own, it's its own mineral, and it's something that we can talk about later on at the shop. But this is a very historic road cut. Uh, Rudy, I'm not gonna pronounce, try to pronounce his last name, but he's like the zeolite guy. He wrote the zeolite book. <laughs> uh, here's, a, I'll, you know, I'll throw some historical photos in here and you can look at those. Um, but there's a large number of zeolites found at this, this road cut here. So the goal for today is to find some zeolites, collect them, take them back to the shop, clean them up, look at them under the microscope, take some beautiful, beautiful photos. And maybe if there's some agates and some calcite in the mix, I guess, I guess we'll pick up some of that. Uh, so let's head over there and get some zeolites. So here is the road cut. Back there is the Snake River. Beautiful, warm October day today. Uh, this is all of the material in here. Let's poke around. So this stuff in here is what we're looking for, okay? Any of this, all of this, I would do want to get some non-fractured samples. And uh, we'll probably look at some of that material up there as well. Uh, so we're going to be trying to chip away, find a little seam, crack some basalt, get some nice samples to take home and uh, check out. It is a... Uh, Interesting. I know it doesn't look like much, right? Sorry about my shadow. It doesn't look like much as is right here, but the idea is that it looks really cool under the microscope. So, yeah. So there's this, and then the material changes a little bit as we walk down here. I've gotten some beautiful little agates out of this. Uh, mostly right out of here, this area. I'm sure we can probably just find some in basalt here too, just sitting. Very vesicular basalt. And we can just grab a piece here. And look, you can see that crystal-lined vug right there. Um, and a bunch of little other... Other ones, you can see there's been uh, some activity out here. People working it. Look at that guy right there. But yeah, all throughout this, we have some. You can see little, little lag gets all over the place. Cool stuff. Obviously, uh, Sarah and the dog are here. I'm sure she's going to probably look for some agates and I'll uh, go do some zeolite collecting back down there. That. Some of these pieces, I'm going to uh, wrap them up in tin foil. This is pretty fresh. This looks like this came out relatively soon. So... Probably gather up some of this stuff and then we'll start working. That's a nice little pocket with some crystal in there. You know, it's unfortunate, but I never had the opportunity to uh, meet Rudy. Um, he obviously seems like a super smart guy, especially with the zeolites, but uh, no longer with us. I like this one right here. I think that's a good one. Um, and really, I kind of also don't really know exactly uh, what I'm doing with these things. I'm still very much so in learning mode, um, just trying to figure out the whole identification, all of that, you know, all of it. So, uh, you know, this is part of it, right? As you learn something new, 
You gotta go out and gather stuff. Nice and secure. Beautiful quiet day out here. Look at this. It's interesting just how much how much is here right it's really it's like everything <laughs> uh, now there's like I think there's 253 different types of zeolite um, obviously you're not going to be able to find all of them here and uh, that's just kind of the way oh, that guy right there that's just the way that goes <laughs> uh, but still interesting nonetheless this little pile right here this is what I'm picking up from this portion of the ledge, and then I'm going to pick up some more over there if there's any. There's a cactus up here. Yeah, that's funny. Gustin is back there. Uh, pretty. Nope. <laughs> oh, hey, that is good. Yeah, right yeah. There. that'll look good. Oh, hey, yeah, let's grab. Look at those. We'll wrap those up in some foil. Those are good finds. Laika has her good find. <laughs> I'll give you a little tour right here. Other side of the road. I think uh, right about there, there's a great photo. Rudy standing at the wall in 1994 collecting zeolites from this very spot. So it's interesting to have such a small exposure of zeolites in relatively short order. I think we collected some good specimens. We are going to head down the road, possibly stop, look at some other road cuts. If there's something interesting, you'll be uh, seeing that as well. Otherwise, we're going to be taking these back into the shop, look at them, some time at the microscope. But I have a feeling there's going to be some other stuff that we stop at. So we did stop at a couple of the other road cuts and uh, found a couple of things, nothing too exciting really. Uh, but I do need to kind of uh, preface this a little bit here by saying I don't really know that much about zeolites, right? Like that's the thing. Um, I would say I'm dipping my toes into the, the kiddie pool here, right? Like, the, it is a complex thing, and uh, I'm just now kind of learning stuff, all right? So really, I'm kind of in the gather and identify mode. Uh, I will share with you a couple of resources that I'm trying to use to learn about zeolites. Um, one is uh, Rudy's book, Zeolites of the World, this thing right here. Now, this is an expensive, <laughs> an expensive book. However, you can look at it for free. Uh, the PDF is free online. Uh, Mindat, uh, we've posted it here on the community tab of the page, and uh, I'll probably drop a link down below. Um, also, uh, this book, uh, The Collector's Guide to Zeolite Group. Now, this book is widely available. You can buy it on Amazon. Those things, uh, I'll put a link down to it. And, you know, I'll put links to these in the ISBNs, and you can go check them out at your library. They seem like they're in libraries. This is actually an old library book that I bought on uh, on eBay. So, you know, screaming good deal on that. Uh, so we're going to go unpack these things, and we'll look at them on the bench, and we'll 
take them into the other shop and uh, look at <laughs> look at them under the microscope, see what we can figure out. So obviously I pack everything in foil. That's what I prefer. I think it's a better way of packing up fragile specimens and uh, go from there, you know. Um, I will say, okay, um, why I like zeolites and why I'm very intrigued. Come on, focus. There we go. Why I'm very intrigued by these. Um, I like that they are small. I like that they are local. I like that we know exactly how many we have. I like that there's a system in place to identify new zeolites. Um, one of the experts, Rudy, uh, he lived here in the Pacific Northwest, and it's kind of amazing to be able to follow in his footsteps and go to the places he went to, look at the things that he looked at, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, to be able to have that. Unfortunately, Rudy's no longer with us. I'll never have the opportunity to chat him up. Um, and the possibility of finding a new zeolite, or at the very least, a new locale, is uh, very high. So I like all of those things. That find it find it all very intriguing. I'll get this stuff unpacked and we'll check it out. Well, here's what we brought back. This is all of it. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this is uh, some work for sure to be able to go through all of this material and uh, kind of really look at it under the microscope. But uh, yeah, all of it came home uh, safe and sound. And we will uh, go look at this now under the microscope. Here's my microscope, and uh, we're gonna start with this <laughs> little tiny piece that Sarah found. I think you can maybe see that. Lots of focus. Anyways, um, we will start there. Uh, the way I, I do this is uh, figure out what it is that I wanna look at, right? And then uh, I will do an image stack and then produce a full depth of field image off of 30 or 40 other images as I change that focus depth. There's a whole write-up on that process that I have up on the website, currently rockhounding.com. You can go check that thing out. In the meantime, this is a very lengthy process. I will be going through all of those samples, figuring out what's good, what we got. Then we'll go and look at the books, look at the samples, look at the photos. Okay, so all of the material that you see here is very, very similar and not that great. I will probably break them open looking for some nice little bugs, some pockets, but uh, nothing too special to the naked eye. This stuff has been sorted. Um, the material in the little pile on the right is very good, but I've yet to take high quality photos of it with the microscope. The stuff on the left is you know, uh, photographed, identified, all of those good things. Um, and of course, Sarah had the best, the better finds of the day. Uh, well, what can I say? That's just the way, the way it works, right? Um, so, uh, I know this isn't going to do it justice, right? Because this is like teeny, 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 tiny little thing. But you see that little, that little speck here? Maybe if I pop this open. There we go. Right there. A little white ball looking thing. Well, now, bear with me with my pronunciation of some of these things. Um, enolcyme. Enolcyme is one way I've heard it pronounced. There's not a whole lot of great information on how to precisely pronounce these names of these zeolites, so bear with me. Um, a lot of them have uh, their origins in other countries, and therefore that's where the, the, the names come from. But uh, if we look at this up close, it is a perfect little specimen. Now, how do I know 
it is what it is that I'm looking at. And it's interesting because this isn't a zeolite known or mentioned, at least online, at that location. If we go to the good book, we can clearly see... Oh, sorry about that. We can clearly see the structure here. We have a whole bunch of different uh, physical properties here, which is what I use primarily for these tiny, tiny minerals in the identification process. I mean, you look at what's known at the site, what is already photographed, what, have been, what has been found, along with structure. Um, I don't have a whole lot of other really great ways of testing something this small, but it is a, a nice little nice little specimen. Um, this guy right here, look at that. Sorry about my big gross fingers, but it's very little and very delicate. Now, uh, that looks like a little piece of calcidity, which it is, the little tube. We have a tube of calcidity, calcidity, I can't even talk today, on there, um, which is interesting. And of course, Sarah found that uh, the little colorless plates of clinoptolite, I don't know, I can't do it. Uh, clinoptolite, I think that's how you say that. Uh, that's what this arrow is pointing at right here. And then there's orange gothite pseudomorphs. Uh, so that kind of almost druzy look is actually that, which is pretty cool. It's cool to be able to use the microscope and identify some of these tiny, tiny minerals. Um, Sarah also found a uh, very good, <laughs> she finds it all, very good sample right here, which you can just see with your naked eyes, that one. That needle, needle structure right there. Um, aronite? Aronite? I think that's how you say it. Um, which in its needle form is relatively un uncommon. Uh, which, another good, good score. Uh, lastly, my find. <laughs> you know, uh, we have... Let's see, which one is it? It is... It's this one right here. These little uh, these little vugs. There's some Philipsite fans, which is very cool. Uh, which is another uncommon structure for Philipsite. So uh, overall, an excellent excellent experience. Um, it's fun to put some of the knowledge. And skills learned through the process of identification to use, look at some information, and uh, start really kind of looking into the big wide world of zeolites. It also helps when I can do fun stuff and kind of feel a little bit of a connection to people that rock hounded decades ago, you know, um, to go where they went, have the photos of where they went is amazing. Who knows, maybe someday this will be like that. Somebody will be uh, looking back, back at this video in 2040, 2050 <laughs> on their uh, hologram machine in their flying cars and be uh, thinking about zeolites. Well, everybody, I think we'll leave this one here. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming by, watching the videos. And I will catch you on the next video.